Good morning, everyone. We are going to take a little trip down the Planetary Trail here uh, on Shetland. This is made by some of the students here. And where I started was the sun, by scale, that is. And so each sign shows us where we are in relation to the sun as we make our way down this trail past each planet. And I have a feeling that we have a hell of a walk ahead of us. We have Mercury here. And we keep going. It's actually not a massive distance between Mercury and Venus, at least as far as their orbits are concerned. And then here we are, heading to Earth, and of course the Moon. We are the only rocky planet with a large satellite, Mars' moons being quite tiny, of course. And we have already made it out to Mars, so a considerable distance. We've got a hell of a way to go. Now watch how much distance we are going to cover. I mean, it took us about a minute and a half to get between the sun and earth. And we are walking and walking and walking to the next destination and I'll tell you I'm pretty certain or this may not be Jupiter I'm kind of thinking that it isn't yep this is an asteroid belt instead look how far we have come just to get out to the asteroid belt And by the way, there's a comparing an asteroid that's two kilometers in diameter to the size of this island. And so we keep going and going and going and we have to watch our footing because there is all kinds of sheep shit everywhere. And that is just kind of a universal thing on this island. You have to watch your step, no matter where you go. You're continuing. So again, think about how little time it took us to get to Earth. And we are hiking and hiking up this hill just to get to Jupiter. Crazy. <sighs> Once again, I don't think my pace has slowed down at all. Not yet, anyway. It's an old, out of shape guy like me. Oh, and incidentally, This place is just utterly gorgeous. My God. All right. So let's continue our journey. Again, you see just how difficult it is. What a challenge we have just to get to the next planet. And here we are at Jupiter. Obviously the largest planet in the solar system, ESA, has its JUICE mission on the way, as you can see. And yeah, big enough to consume every other planet in our solar system. And as you can see, there, or as you can't see,
there's no more signs before we reach the crest of this hill. And that is because as far away as Jupiter is, Saturn is double that distance. So I've set myself up for a little bit of exercise today. Whoops. And I'm sure you guys don't want to hear me gasping for breath as I climb this hill. So we're going to speed things up. You can also see, or see the sea, see the North Sea out in the distance, and that super cool lighthouse. Right there. All right. And continue our journey. Lots of bird life here. Something that is taken into account with any of the operations here at Saxavord. I actually don't launch during breeding season. It's only one month, but still. Here we are at Saturn. Somebody decided to put tiger stripes on this thing or something. Very cool. 1.3 hours, by the way, as I'm sure you're able to see, for light to get from Earth to the Sun, or rather the Sun to Earth, to get from the Sun to Saturn. I'll get this right eventually. 1.3 hours, so I wasn't lying in my thumbnail. I am indeed, scale-wise anyway, traveling faster than light to reach these signposts and yet see how long it's taking me. Actually traveling several times the speed of light. Thirteen and a half minutes have passed. Stopping for just a moment because just on the just way out there, I think I can see my next destination. That's Uranus, not Neptune. Think about the massive distance that I've covered, millions upon millions of kilometers. We still have a hell of a long ways to go. And as I mentioned a couple more times, I'm gonna have to climb back up this damn thing. Can't say I'm very enthusiastic about that. Talk to you soon.
and here we are and my anus your anus um someone's anus <sighs> of course first planet to be discovered using a telescope and incredible wind speeds of course that's typical with the gas and ice giants and yes miranda that's an interesting fact as well cliffs that are 20 kilometers high the highest in the solar system what an amazing moon light travel time 2.7 hours that gives you an idea i've been on this journey for just about 18 minutes so it gives you an idea of just how fast by scale i'm traveling and yet look at how long it's still taking me at warp whatever to get out this far. there on the other side is hill by the way is where the saxivord facility is there's a ship out there a boat actually right. we've almost reached the end of our journey I've been on this trail for nearly 24 minutes. It's gonna take me at least that much time to get back, especially since I have to go uphill for a lot of it. I've committed some time to this endeavor. I hope you've enjoyed it. Almost there. Almost there. Almost. Oh, sorry. Inside joke. Here we are. Oh yes, let's, oh yeah, the reason Neptune and Pluto are so close to one another is because their orbits actually cross over. Pluto's orbit is so irregular that sometimes Neptune is further away, sometimes Pluto is further away. So here's Neptune. It's quite beautiful indeed. And yeah, wind speeds at 2100 kilometers per hour. Neptune being the windiest, perhaps the most horrifying planet in the solar system. And here we are at the end. The Kuiper Belt and Pluto, although our original ideas that Pluto is just a Kuiper Belt object, a captured Kuiper Belt object of some kind, well, maybe. Once again, it's difficult to say because it is so unique, such an amazing place with such active geology, so many things we still don't know. And Pluto being completely different than anybody thought it might be. And five, uh, 5.5 light hours. Look at all the distance we've come. And once again, think of how little time it took us to get from the sun to earth. That gives you an idea of just how enormously distant everything is here. I'm curious as to whether or not they tell us, yep, if we were on this same trail in order to get to Proxima Centauri, would require that we walk 1,338 kilometers along this trail in order to get all the way there. If we are ever going to travel between the stars, it's going to be a hell of a journey. Thanks for joining us. Until next time, stay angry about space.